Thank you so much for joining us this evening for concert number five, Remembrance, as part of the Sonic Explorations Chamber Musics here at the University of Mississippi. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your lives to join us this evening. We are diving into three works by New York-based composer Stephanie Ann Boyd. I had the pleasure of meeting Stephanie in Memphis in 2018. We performed together, well, I performed a work of hers and got to meet her and she's a very lovely person. She's so excited about the event this evening. And we hit it off and I started looking into pieces of hers after having met her and um, have asked Dr. Christine Kralik to join me this evening as well as Dr. Nave Graham. So I hope you enjoy the concert this evening in preparing for it, I was fortunate to meet by um, e-meet <laughs> a few of the collaborators that work regularly with Stephanie. Sasha Parfanova is a Boston-based multimedia artist and she produces these incredib incredibly beautiful collages, which I hope you'll enjoy this evening. We have photography by Adam Solzberg and there will be two poems, one featuring a poet, the poem by Paul Lawrence Dunbar and another new poem, which is debuting this evening, entitled Lily of the Valley. I hope you enjoy the concert. Fantasia Olora is an eight minute piece for cello and piano. It is quite literally opus one, I wrote it when I was 17 years old and had a crush on a friend who played cello. So three days before Valentine's Day, I decided to write this piece for him. And I still remember working on it uh, in the orchestra rehearsal room uh, at my high school. And February is an incredible time to play it because of course it was written during February, but also it's lovely when the weather itself is just as dark and intimate and moody as the piece is.
Thank you very much. I thought it would be interesting to show an early work of hers, and now we're moving to a recent piece. I thought I'd talk to you a little bit about Flower Catalog. Flower Catalog is a set of 12 preludes for solo piano, and after I met Stephanie, 
I was absolutely thrilled um, to get an email from her and she invited me to um, be one of 12 women who will be playing the flower catalog um, throughout this coming year. And I hope in a future Sonic concert to present the entire 12 preludes. Um, these are uh, based on her love of flowers. So the first piece she wrote, I did play here actually uh, several, a couple years ago uh, as part of a concert and it was entitled Lilac. And I was so taken by the piece. Stephanie writes about her own love of flowers and how her mother said, I, I wanted our yard to be an edible yard. And she grew up around them. She has her favorite flower. So in creating the flower catalog, she, each, she asked each woman to pick their own personal favorite. And I chose Lily of the Valley. I want, in doing some research about lilies, I thought I would look at some poetry that's been written by Lily of the Valley. Here are the commissioners. And I, as I said, I hope to present this to you. I am honored to be part of this incredible group of women. I wanted to introduce you to a poet named Paul Lawrence Dunbar. He was born in Ohio in 1872, and he was one of the first African-American literary figures, figures to garner critical claim on a national scale. His contributions in a variety of genres left a legacy that endures today. His parents were both slaves prior to the Civil War, and many of their experiences of slave and plantation life influenced his later writings. His extensive body of work provides a significant representation of African American life at the turn of the 20th century. In fact, Dr. Maya Angelou titled her 1969 autobiography after the final line in one of Don Dunbar's poems entitled Sympathy, I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings. And in looking at his beautiful poems, I wanted to um, recite, if you don't mind, his poem entitled Lily, The Lily of the Valley, that's taken from Lyrics of Sunshine and Shadow. Sweetest of the flowers a-blooming in the fragrant vernal days is the lily of the valley with its soft, retiring ways. Well, you chose this humble blossom as the nurse's emblem flower who grows more like her ideal every day and every hour. Like the lily of the valley in her honesty and worth, ah, she blooms in truth and virtue in the quiet nooks of earth. Though she stands erect in honor when the heart of mankind bleeds, still she hides her own deserving in the beauty of her deeds. In the silence of the darkness where no eye may see and know, there her footsteps shod with mercy and fleet kindness come and go. Not amid the sounds of plaudits, nor before the garish day does she shed her soul's sweet perfume, does she take her gentle way. But alike her ideal flower with its honey-laden breath, still her heart blooms forth its beauty in the valley shades of death. I wanted to introduce you to the inspiration for why I chose Lily of the Valley. My grandparents were married over 55 years, and my grandmother would recite poetry when we would meet on Sunday afternoons for dinner. And she was joined in by my mother. And she you know, would say these poems by, by heart. And I have such fond memories of her doing that when we were all joined together as a family. She was an incredible woman. And she inspired a lot of students. They still come up to me today and talk about Ola et Jeanette Dury Cerny. They talk about Miss Cerny being a really amazing teacher. And she earned her master's degree almost 80 years ago. She met my grandfather, who grew up on a farm in Kansas. He was the son of Czechoslovakian immigrants 
He earned the Bronze Star in his service in World War II. And he and my grandmother had three children, and he ended up living in Oxford, and they settled here. And the reason I'm speaking about my grandparents, when it was time for me to choose a flower for this piece you're about to hear, my grandfather often had outside a shovel in his hand, and he would have ordered these special bulbs, and he would just dig a place anywhere. And flowers still today appear out of the ground, and they were a gift for his wife so that everywhere she stepped in the yard, she would be able to enjoy a new blossom. And Lily of the Valley was her favorite. Commissioned by Adrian Park, Lily of the Valley is one of the 12 flower catalog preludes uh, written in 2020. Each prelude was commissioned by a different soloist about her own favorite flower. And in sort of rainbow order, this, uh, the entire set includes red rose, pincushion protea, marigold, yellow rose, daffodil, daylily, water lily, lilac, iris, morning glory, hydrangea, and lily of the valley. And when Adrienne first commissioned this piece, she told me a lovely story about how her grandfather would plant flowers in his backyard at whim so that in the spring her grandmother would be surprised every morning by what was coming out of the earth, uh, all of these beautiful flowers. Uh, including Lily of the Valley. And in writing this work, I thought of my own patch of Lily of the Valley in the backyard of the house that I grew up with. And all of these hundreds of tiny, delicate, perfect cream-colored bells.
Imogen is a 10 minute, three movement work for flute and piano commissioned by Cincinnati Soundbox for their inaugural season in 2015. And each movement takes a melody that I made up as a child and merges it with uh, Gaelic influences. And when I was working on this piece in the summer of 2015, it was my first summer in New York, and I remember how lovely it was to just sit in my apartment working on this piece and working on these melodies that I had sung to myself for years and years but had never thought about how they looked on paper. And uh, I'd like you to think of this work as a three-part fairy tale for flute and piano.
thank you. Thank you to everyone who helped put this evening together. I really appreciate you coming out this evening, and I hope you enjoyed our beautiful collages and the poetry and that something touched you. I really appreciate every one of you. Thank you so much.